Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this, um, this webinar. It's a joint effort between ASI and Asphalt Group. Uh, as Charlotte said, I'm going to cover asphalt preservation in the first half, and then Gerald Byrne will cover uh, geosynthetics and asphalt reinforcement in the second bit. I'll just say a few words about um, ASI before I kick off, just in case you haven't heard of us. Uh, we've been around for 20 odd years uh, trading, uh, we're based in Milton Keynes in the UK. Uh, but we do operate globally in Europe and in China, Australia, and the Caribbean. Uh, and over the past 20 years, we've been supplying technology uh, to various privately uh, owned assets like airports, um, bridges, test tracks, DBFO schemes uh, to extend the life of asphalt. And we haven't really engaged uh, properly, in my view, with, with the local authorities during that time. Uh, and with the advent of the, um, the new code of practice and well-managed highway infrastructure that came out, I think, 18 months ago, it just seemed appropriate that we should re-engage uh, with local authorities uh, and raise awareness of the technology and how it fits into the engineer's toolkit, really. Um, so that's a little bit of background about us. Um, as Charlotte mentioned, please uh, ask or type your question uh, as we go through. There'll be some time, hopefully, at the end of my presentation and Gerald's to deal with a few questions, but please uh, feel free to uh, type your question in. Um, year to date, we've treated about 18 million square meters uh, globally with um, our product, Rhinofel, uh, an asphalt preservative. Um, it's worth just, I think, clarifying at this early stage that there is a difference between preservatives and rejuvenators. Often people get the, the wrong end of the stick. So a preservation uh, system is all about uh, maintaining the existing condition of the, of the road surface. Uh, rejuvenators deal with the more aged, oxidized surfacings that need to be you know, rejuvenated and brought back to life a little bit. So the technology is different. But today's presentation is about present, uh, preservatives. Uh, the context of this presentation really is that um, the road network is a council's most valuable asset. So anything we can do to extend the life and maintain the condition will help councils to achieve their key objectives. Um, and as I'm sure we're all aware, asphalt will oxidize and age over time. As it does so, it cracks, we lose aggregate, and ultimately you know, cracks and potholes will form. Um, there's a wide range of techniques available, obviously, for dealing with roads that are showing signs of visible surface defects. So we're primarily talking about uh, amber and red roads in that context. Uh, for asphalt preservation, we're mainly looking at roads in green to light amber condition. So roads that haven't yet really started to develop any serious visible surface defects. Um, and the trick really is to apply it before those defects become evident. So based on local knowledge, if you know, for example, that your uh, SMA surfacings or thin surface course materials are going to start to uh, show signs of cracking and potholing, and requiring re reactive maintenance, say at year eight or year 10, uh, the idea is to treat uh, two years before that scenario, uh, or one to two years, or at least start planning it two years out. Um, and it's, it's a great technique really um, in terms of life cycle planning, uh, and it can help you to extend the life of the asset significantly and delay those more major interventions around um, resurfacing. Ultimately, of course, you know, we will need to, to use other techniques. We will need to use surface dressing and uh, perhaps micro surfacing as, as the road surface polishes up. But preservation can hold the condition for typically 10 to 15 years before you need to do that. Um, so how does it work? Um, it's a spray applied product. Um, it penetrates the asphalt surface. The depth of penetration will vary dependent on the, on the mix design. Uh, degree of compaction, the air void content, and the age of the asphalt. Um, so the, the older the asphalt, the more micro cracks will have formed and the deeper the penetration. Typically, based on work we've done at the University of Nottingham using X-ray scanning technique, um, it'll penetrate our product anywhere will penetrate about 30 millimeters into a surface course, virtually full depth of the surface course, penetrates in, and it cures and it seals the surface. It fills all those interconnecting voids and micro cracks. And in doing so, it keeps water out, keeps any other contaminants like salt out of the surface course and helps to uh, minimize the formation of any sort of surface defects that might occur. Um, our product is very tough and hard. It's typically 
between two and ten pen. So if you know anything about bitumens or or asphalt, you know that's an incredibly hard product. Uh, so it also toughens the surface and improves the wear resistance. Um, it also strengthens the the bond condition between the aggregate uh, and the binder, um, and it's an antioxidant. So our, our particular product doesn't oxidize when it's spray applied. Uh, it'll continue to maintain the condition. Um, so we use Gilsonite technology. It's been around for many, many years, if not decades. Um, it comes from America, American Gilsonite, and it's a Utah area. It's an incredibly hard material. It's like a resin, you can see the image there, uh, and that's a key constituent in our product. So that basically penetrates the surface, it sets and seals and hardens and toughens. Um, and it's an incredibly hard material compared to bitumen. Um, so compared to, you know, bitumen is a, is a lot softer material. Uh, even hard grades of bitumen are a lot softer than gilsonite and will wear away more quickly. Um, and of course, bitumen isn't an antioxidant. It will continue to oxidize uh, when it's spilled, spilled onto the surface. Uh, the little picture there at the bottom, you can see the powder um, of the gilsonite. Uh, and it's pelletized for ease of processing. It's very difficult to actually process powdered gilsonite. Um, this is uh, one slide I thought which was interesting to show. This is a, an X-ray uh, scan cross-section of a core. So the blue hazy area just outlines the shape of the core really. It's an SMA um, and it's been treated with rhinophile a preservative and the, the um, yellow amber coloration is where it's penetrated in. It's found its way into all of those micro cracks and voids. Um, and it's penetrated there 31.79 millimeters into the into the core. Uh, the viscosity of the product is, is like water. Um, and we know that water gets into, into asphalt. And that's the main enemy of asphalt. Uh, so if water can get in, this, this will get in. So it's basically doing what water does. It penetrates in, but it, it, rather than damaging the surface course, then seals it and, uh, and hardens it. Uh, so how do you know um, a preservative that you're using contains gilsonite? Um, the, the answer is that the HAPAS certificate will mention it. So this is our HAPAS certificate. And the little blue arrow there is pointing to where it says natural bitumen. Um, so gilsonite is a naturally occurring bitumen. Um, other uh, certificates may just probably say bitumen. Uh, so, they, so look for the, the phrase natural bitumen. Uh, the process um, is it's a seasonal process, like most surface treatments. It's got a slightly longer season than anything else. Um, we can spray into October, providing the road is dry, which is often a challenge in the UK. Uh, but we're not restricted by uh, the need for embedment, um, as with surface dressing, for example. So it's quite a long season. Uh, the application rate is about typically 0.5 litres per square metre, so about a quarter of the application rate for a surface dressing binder, for example. It's applied by a combi sprayer. That's a combination machine which applies the, uh, the binder followed immediately by very fine dust. Uh, so the particle size of the dust is typically 0.5 millimeters, a very fine material. And that's there to manage uh, scrim and ensure that we don't uh, suffer any, any problems, initial problems with skid resistance. But we can advise any authority interested in using the technique uh, on site selection and suitability and scrim is obviously one of the considerations that we always take into into effect when we are deciding if a, if a site is, is suitable. Um, so it's a three-man operation. Uh, it's a very fast process. Uh, we can typically do 30,000 square meters in, in a shift in an urban setting even. Uh, on an airfield it would be double that. Um, we apply during day or night time. It's one of the very few if not the only surface treatment that can be spray applied at night time. It cures typically within one to two hours, uh, even in the early hours of the morning. Very rapid drying, and during the closure, you can then apply uh, your road marking and treat any cracks that may require treat treatment at the same time before application. Uh, there's no aftercare required. Um, it's a very fast, invisible process. Uh, residents will wake in the morning and see you know, a brand new road surface, which they're obviously very pleased with. Um, so anything to do with site selection, uh, we can help you with. Uh, this slide just uh, tries to illustrate the types of surfacings or surfaces that um, uh, could be treated with a preservation system. So on the left there, asphaltic concrete or a macadam in old money. 
Um, then we've got stone mastic asphalt, a 10 mil SMA, showing some stone loss, perhaps some min minor cracking going on. Uh, and then, um, then we've got an oxidized SMA uh, and a hot rolled asphalt with chippings, showing some minor cracking. So those roads would probably be, you know, still in green or light amber condition, but no major surface defects. If you had some minor patching, um, not full length of the site, then they could, you know, be patched up or do some inlay work and then treat the entire rest of the road surface. But we would normally recommend, you know, green to light amber condition. Anything more severe than light amber, then it really is probably surface dressing territory. Uh, and the picture on the right there shows you what a treated surface looks like compared to untreated. And to all intents and purposes, it looks like a new road surface. So you can probably just about make out the very fine grit on the surface as well that's been applied during the application. So the main outcomes extends the life of the carriageway surfacing, um, typically by five years per treatment. So you treat it typically in year eight, for example. Uh, we then hold that condition for five years. You then retreat it um, five years beyond that, and then a further five years. At some point, you may need to do something else if you lose the scrim values, for example. So it can help to reduce the whole life cost, uh, improve the net, or at least maintain the network condition and you get so much um, improved aesthetics as well, which the, the public often uh, like. Uh, I'm aware there's uh, some asset managers dialing in today. So this uh, next two slides tries to uh, illustrate where this process fits in in the life cycle planning context, really. This is our conventional life cycle planning approach that many authorities adopt. Um, and really it's around investment. Um, the, the surface deteriorates, uh, will intervene, it'll deteriorate again and we'll, we'll continue to intervene. So in this example here, we are starting off with a road surface in excellent condition. Uh, by year 10, we're doing some patching, it's deteriorated. We do some surface dressing. Uh, the dressing will then hold it to some extent, but it continues to deteriorate. We dress again in year 19 uh, and, and so on. So but basically we are managing decline. With preservation, um, we treat the road surface two years before reactive maintenance is, is expected to be required and it holds the condition. So we're maintaining the road surface in good to average condition for much longer than, than uh, otherwise with other techniques. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, you can retreat every five years. Uh, we don't actually think um, you could leave it beyond that really. I think five years is the, uh, the, the maximum term you'd, you'd want to leave the road surface. Um, some examples, some case studies of uh, roads that have been treated with uh, with Rhinofelts in uh, recent years. This is Norbrick Road in Blackpool. Um, I think Will Britton, who's the president of Elkrig, happens to live on Norbrick Road, so it seemed a good site to choose last September to treat. Um, it's 1.4 kilometres long urban road, north, north part of Blackpool, and it was surfaced with SMA about 10 years prior. Uh, and the council wanted to uh, try and maintain the condition. It was just starting to show signs of wear and tear, some minor surface defects. But because it was an SMA, they wanted to maintain the, the low noise characteristics of the site. Uh, it was treated in September, uh, just short of 14,000 square metres over two nights. Um, the closure was 7 a.m., uh, sorry, 7 p.m. to 6 a.m., um, and the, the run of fart was applied immediately following sweeping and masking off the gullies. Um, it, spray, it was sprayed in an hour, it cured in two hours, the line markings were replaced, and the roads reopened in, in time for the uh, early morning traffic at 6 a.m. Um, the A6 at Rushton, this was treated last October by um, Asphalt Group. Um, it's the fourth longest road in England, single and dual carriageway. Uh, North Hampshire have a major uh, warehouse and logistics sector, so they're very keen to maintain their network to support business growth and attract investment. This project was 2.4 kilometre dual carriageway, rushed into high and ferry, ferries bypass, 4,000 commercial vehicles per day. Uh, the SMA was 16 years old. Uh, it had been patched in places, just starting to show signs of ravelling, and North Hampshire basically couldn't afford to replace it and they were looking for a cost-efficient uh, solution. Uh, 38,000 square metres were treated in total, 24,000 square metres in, uh, in one shift by Asphalt Group. Um, and only last week, Kia told us that the surface that had been treated was still in very, very good condition, been no further deterioration. 
uh, so it's now 17 year old uh, SMA. Very recently, back in May, uh, this is Yedham Way. This was treated in Blackpool. Um, it connects the Blackpool Town Centre with the M55, carries 12,000 vehicles a day, and the road had undergone major uh, reconstruction since 2015. Very recently, they've done some resurfacing work, um, but they had five and a half thousand square metres of SMA that was five years old that still looked in reasonable condition, and they didn't want to resurface it. Um, so they decided to use Rhinofelt to um, A, make that section look the same as the resurfaced areas, and secondly, to enable it to last as long as the fresh asphalt. It was like in the sandwich, I guess, like, like a sandwich really with, with the resurfaced sections either either side of it. Uh, it was treated uh, on a Sunday morning um, during a short closure to minimise disruption. It took two hours to spray, two hours to cure and the road markings were refreshed the following morning, ready for opening to traffic. Other sites uh, treated, um, Staffordshire have used preservation for over 10 years, mainly in an urban context, as you can see there, lots of parked cars. It can be quite difficult to get into these sites with other, other types of surface treatments. Um, so they've used uh, preservative in that context. Uh, Leicestershire used uh, our product a couple of years ago. They treated nine sites, again, in a sort of residential context, really, cul-de-sacs, uh, tight areas that are difficult to get into. Um, and then we've done the M40. So immediately you get a sense that pre preservation is suitable. It's a very flexible process. It can treat very heavily traffic routes and also quiet, you know, re re residential type areas. Uh, we've been treating the M40 since 2005. Uh, the entire length has been treated three times with Rhinofelt during that time. We typically do half a million square meters a year. Um, and during that time, it saved the concession, which is operated by UK Highways, mm -hmm. one full length resurfacing operation. So you start to get a sense of the uh, enormous cost savings that have accrued. Um, and they've informed us that they've, they've, they've estimated they've saved about 30% of their total maintenance replacement costs over the time of the concession. Um, we treated the A421 in 2017, that's a Highways England uh, site, uh, and that will undergo further treatment next year. Uh, the A50 is an interesting case study operated by Connect Roads. Uh, back in 2008, the SMA was 10 years old. It was looking a little bit uh, tired and creeping towards the end of its natural life. Um, and Connect Roads are uh, looking for an efficient, cost-effective solution. Um, they tried Rhinofelt, hoping they might get a couple of years out of it because they weren't familiar with the technology. Um, in 2013, the road surface had, basically hadn't changed, so they treated it again, um, and they treated it again in 2018. Um, so the SMA there is now 20 years old and still performing very well. Uh, appreciate we're not anywhere near China. Uh, but we have um, treated the length of the Hangshu Bay Bridge, which is on the eastern coast of China. It's the second longest ocean crossing bridge in the world, 35 kilometers long. So it really is a long bridge. Uh, and that's been treated uh, basically because over there it's very expensive to get asphalt onto a bridge surface. And it's much more cost effective to use a preservation system. Um, in Germany, we have a, quite a busy market there on the test tracks. The uh, car manufacturers like to maintain the condition or like the condition of the test tracks they use to be unchanged um, so that when they're making small changes to the, the car, uh, they can then you know, determine how those changes have affected the performance and not have to build in any variability from the road surface. So all the major car manufacturers, BMW, Audi, Volkswagen, they, they all uh, approve the use of uh, Rhinofelt. Um, the airport market in Australia uses Rhinofelt. Uh, last year we did Sydney, Alice Springs and McKay uh, airports. Obviously this year with the virus, it's been uh, slightly more quieter. Um, and again, just remind the audience really that we can you know, treat lightly trafficked urban roads as well as busy um, motorway and trunk road strategic routes. Don't Please don't go away from this webinar today thinking this is a process just for very heavily trafficked sites. It isn't, it can treat any form of asphalt, even footpaths. Roundabouts can be quite tricky to deal with um, and other, other surface treatments aren't really uh, designed to cope with the stresses that are applied on a roundabout. So preservation would be ideal on roundabouts. 
Um, we've got a product that can be used in tunnels, um, and also we can treat uh, trench reinstatements and heavily patched areas if, if you need to sort of seal it and extend the life of those of those repairs. So just to summarise that part of the presentation, really, this is a process suitable for treating strategic, resilient uh, and urban routes, heavily trafficked roads, right the way down to um, residential areas, cul-de-sacs and even footpaths. Um, early adopters, I mentioned Staffordshire earlier, they've been using pres preservation for many, many years. Um, Hampshire, likewise, they started, I think, about 2010 uh, using preservation. Um, last year, we did quite a large number of um, web, uh, seminars through Elkrig um, and with GAST, one of our um, uh, collaboration partners. Last year, we I think we presented to about 80 local authorities all in. Um, and we had a quite, a, quite a large number that wanted to do some work this year. These are the authorities that are still indicating that they want to do some work this year. Obviously, programmes have been delayed with, with a lockdown. Um, you know, dressing programmes have been delayed. So we're still um, hoping that we're going to do some of this work in, uh, in August, September and into October. So you can use preservation into October, whereas other treatments would be have a shorter uh, window of op opportunity. Um, we have a number of approved applicators. These are companies that um, have applied our products um, and continue to do so. Um, and, you know, we assist them to varying degrees. We provide a lot of technical and operational support to ensure the process is done right first time. Um, so Velocity are in the market now, as are the Asphalt Group. Uh, Velocity are working very closely with Henry Williams, who are providing the, the combi truck to apply the process. Uh, that's a, that's a partnership very much for the local road market. Um, and you can see there we've also and continue to work with the likes of Road Grip and Colas and Rotex and RMS. Um, obviously, local authorities will uh, put tenders out or have a preference to deal with certain uh, contractors, but um, you know we can provide a means of uh, delivering the product. Whatever suits your needs, really. Um, and also we've got... Um, or Henry Williams have, have got this um, small kit now, small plants plant and equipment that can treat cycle tracks and uh, cycleways and um, and footways. So again, very versatile uh, delivery uh, system. Uh, in terms of specification, how do you specify asphalt preservation? Um, Highways England have a spec. It's called Clause 950. It's in the specification for highway works. Uh, it's a very short specification. It just really says that the product should have a HAPAS or equivalent product um, assessment certification. Obviously, HAPAS is a BBA brand. Uh, PTS can also provide equivalent product certification. Um, but it doesn't say very much beyond that, really. Um, so it is important to look at the, the scope of the certification in the, in the, in the certificate. There isn't yet... Um, I'm aware of uh, an agreed industry scheme for preservation. I know one was being developed. Um, we'd also recommend that you ask for evidence of performance. So if you're going to use it on a heavily trafficked uh, trunk road, you know, has the product you're proposing to use been used in that situation before? Um, to claim a product acts as a preservative, in our view, it should contain an antioxidant based on gilsonite because bitumen will continue to oxidize and age harden and not provide the same life extension. So make sure you know what you're using. Uh, the preservative should have a C mark or shall have a C mark. Uh, the contractor applying it should be registered to sector scheme 13, certainly for highway works, local authority works. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, don't confuse preservatives with rejuvenators. They are very different and they work differently um, and should be selected on, on that basis. Uh, the RSTA, um, I was at the RSTA for 10 years, and uh, one of the things that we did there was produce lots of codes of practices covering a wide range of surface treatments. There is one for um, asphalt preservation, and you'll see there it's got the ADEPT badge on it. So it has been endorsed by ADEPT uh, this year, in fact, so before the lockdown. So it covers um, site suitability, um, different types of materials, uh, penetrative treatments, non-penetrative treatments, post-application and aftercare. So it's a very useful um, starter document, really, if you're not familiar with the, with the te technology. Uh, and it's freely available on the RSTA website. Uh, I'm sure you're all very familiar with this document, Code of Practice, 
I'm sure you'll work into this. And obviously, uh, there are a number of recommendations in the document uh, which um, link into preservation. So it teaches good life cycle planning, whole life cost reduction, um, the need for resilient network, um, and carbon reduction. So preservation keys into all of these key themes, particularly carbon reduction. What better way of reducing the carbon footprint of your road network by not having to replace it? At least for a long time. Um, benefits, um, it reduces demand. For, so preservation reduces demand for reactive maintenance. So you're going to see far fewer potholes, far less insurance claims coming through. It provides an alternative to surface dressing where this isn't the preferred option. It can double the asphalt surface life half the cost of resurfacing. Um, it helps with life cycle planning. Uh, it provides invisible nighttime working, high productivity. Uh, it provides good road availability for road users. It breaks that deterioration cycle. Good aesthetics, which obviously you know, voters like, so cabinet members should be pleased with that. Um, and a huge carbon savings. Um, and this just emphasizes the, the op your options, really. Uh, this is uh, the A494. Uh, so Chester area, uh, six long, it's the tarmac scheme, six long days to lay 110,000 square meters of 40 mil SMA. Um, uh, presumably it needed to be resurfaced, but you know, Rhinofart would have done that in two shifts uh, and the treated asphalt would then last as long as fresh um, asphalt essentially over two treatments. So, you know, it just tries to put the whole thing into some context really. But obviously there are going to be circumstances where the road service does need to be resurfaced, obviously. Um, we commissioned a report by Best Foot Forward um, on, to establish the carbon footprint of preservation compared to uh, resurfacing. The report's freely available if you want to copy. Uh, the outcome is that um, preservation will save more than 90% of the carbon footprint compared to resurfacing an asphalt surface course. Um, operational benefits, I've mentioned some of these already. So long season, only requires a three-man crew. Uh, which is obviously ideal in the current um, context. No ironwork lifting, um, existing, existing curb heights not affected, no additional weight applied to the surface. We retain the surface profile. We're not requiring any high PSV aggregate to be used. It's utility friendly, fast process, relatively quiet to do at night, so no compaction plant. So you can see lots of benefits, lots of reasons to do it. Um, i just thrown this slide in because up in Scotland they have major issues with tar disposal. They haven't got any, any licensed hazardous waste sites in Scotland. So any asphalt that's, re that's removed con contains tar has to get shipped down south into uh, landfill in England. Uh, so they're very keen on, on preservation to try and delay the time, the time and the cost of replacing the surface and having to dispose of, of tar. Um, so that's me finished just about. In summary, it delivers good outcomes, extends the service life reduces costs, maintains road condition, additional benefits, aesthetics, good aesthetics, fast operation, one visit to site, not two or three, environmentally beneficial. And it's a very flexible treatment. So if you retain one uh, fact from today, it can treat any type of road surface from the M40 down to a cul-de-sac. Um, if you've got any further um, uh, questions or interests, please, um, please uh, get in touch. I can see we've got a few questions there. Um, uh, I'm just trying to work out now to publish these questions. Um, the first can't okay. The first um, question says, "How long would would you ideally have to wait prior to remarking the lining?" Um, typically, it will dry on a night shift between one and two hours. So, say two hours would be the longest you'd need to wait before you did the road marking. Uh, next question is, how long after application can the road be trafficked? Um, once it's cured in two hours, you can traffic it, basically. Uh, and re remember that the, most of the product penetrates into the, into the asphalt. It's not sat on top. So once it's, hard, once it's dried and hardened, you can traffic it more or less straight away. Uh, how does it apply to footpaths? Um, I showed some um, small plants and equipment earlier, which Henry Williams have, have recently acquired. So there are contractors out there with, with a kit that can do footpaths for you. Um, and how do you work around areas which have been, uh, have high friction surfacing on? Uh, you don't treat high friction surfacing with preservation. You, you make sure that uh, the contractor's aware of that and don't you know, stop short and just mask it off before you uh, get to the road surface. 